from me. You can work right here, this is good. It's good right here. I gave you guys your instruction in the dressing room. I expect a clean fight and protect yourself at all times. Let's touch up, good luck to both of you guys. It is a heavyweight matchup. I'm going to let you know when that man fights, F.A. Ajagma, do not blink. Of his five professional bouts, four of them have been done in the first round. So he likes to bring an end to opponents in quick fashion. And Curtis Hopper has walked out of the ring. Wait, what? I cannot believe this. I've never seen this before. He walked out of the ring. He's not fighting this guy. He walked out of the ring. I cannot believe this. I have never that plays such a symbolic way in this fight. What's up, fight fans? This is Kurt DeVille with Counter Punch Boxing News, and I have some new news concerning the epic story of Curtis Harper and Effie Ajagba. If you guys don't remember Curtis Harper, he made history when he touched gloves of Effie Ajagba. And then soon after the bell, first bell rang, he walked out of the ring and went to his dressing room and went home. OK, now this is the story to explain what really happened, because a lot of people will relive this in memes or in stories on Instagram or YouTube themselves. And people will just see Curtis Harper leaving the ring. But there is a much bigger story behind the reason why Curtis Harper left at the first beginning bell. Curtis Harper was a heavyweight boxer with the record of 13 and 5 and was scheduled to take on heavy prospect Effie Ajagba in a six round contest. The story behind this reveals and reads that, Kurt, that Harper claimed he didn't sign the contract that would have gotten him 6,000 for that fight with Ajagba. Like we said, readers all over remember that day that Curtis Harper said no mas before saying, let's get it on. Curtis Harper was a heavyweight, of course, he, this bout was um, August 24th, 2018, live on Fox Sports 1 from Minneapolis Armory in Minnesota. What was supposed to transpire in the ring, however, turned out to be a viral video of a man touching gloves and Ray Flores and Jamal Charlo on the broadcast having to break down Harper's footwork Now, Leon Margulis, the president of Warriors Boxing, stated to ESPN that Curtis Harper should have received a copy of the fight contract. Harper said there were supposed to be two separate contracts, including a bout agreement that was signed by all parties at the weigh-in. But Harper said he did not get the document after he arrived in Minneapolis, even though he requested a copy of it. I didn't know it was an issue until now because he never brought it up until after the fight, Margulis said to ESPN. But of course, he could have had it. Commission required it before weigh-in. Harper the day before made it to weigh-in and from everyone involved, from the reports, everything was okay. It wasn't on the side of Harper and his team, Rick Glacier, who was the promoter working with Harper, confirms this side of it. He says, quote, you don't treat people like dog blank and lie to them, con them and treat them blatantly horrible, Glacier said to ESPN. I think if Curtis had to do it all over again, he would do the same thing. Nate Campbell, trainer and former title holder in his own right, stated that Harper was never going to fight a Jogba. For Harper himself, he stated it went beyond the money. Quote, it wasn't about money. It was about the respect of the game, Harper said in an interview in Los Angeles Times. He said, I touch gloves and in the bottom right corner over my opponent's shoulder was the promoter and matchmaker all smiling and happy after I never signed a contract. 
I never got a copy back of the electronic contract. It felt like I didn't have a contract. I never saw a contract, so I never knew what they had. I wanted a bout contract and a per participant contract and matchmaker. Chico Rivas told me, get in the ring or you won't get paid. It was the hardest thing for me to do to walk back to the dressing room, Harper said. <clears throat> Talking about walking out after the fight, I didn't quit. It never started. However, people see it is really not my concern. Harper would later try to get the bout ruled a disqualification loss for him overturned to no avail. This fight was this fight to date for Harper was his last and he was not in action so far since the walkout. Ajagba is still undefeated and slowly climbing the ranks and was last in action winning on a Manny Pacquiao card. So this reveals the story of F.A. Ajagba and Curtis Harper. There was uh, confusion about the contract. Um, I think Curtis Harper did a right, right did the right thing. Me counterpunching Curtis Harper though. Um, if I was Cur Curtis Harper, it wouldn't go that far. Okay. If, if I if there were things that had to be finalized, me counterpunching and looking back on that date. They would have gave me that contract before stepping in the ring. People quoted, hey, he could have had it. He could have had whatever he wanted. But everything is 2020 in hindsight, isn't it? The fact of the matter was there was something that he required that he wasn't getting. If that was the case, Curtis Harper should have never entered the ring in the first place. I would have never wrapped up or gloved up or walked into the ring if I knew I wasn't going to get paid. If someone was telling me the moment when he said, hey, you get in there or you won't get paid, then according to Chico, Chico Rivas, then I wouldn't have gotten in the ring and I wouldn't have got paid because what I wanted should have uh, been my ground to stand on. They wouldn't have gave it to me, I was out. Okay, so this really tells the story of Curtis Harper you guys tell me what you think about this legendary night where Curtis Harper left out of the ring of Effie Ajagba. Of course, please subscribe. And you guys been counterpunched. Peace.